Hey everyone, welcome back. And this is my review of Trinity, Trinity 7, Episode 3. This is a really odd series to review. Or not really to review, but to talk about in general, because... I think it's a really good series, but you have to watch it and get to the good parts. You have to be the type of person who's either able... Who either really likes fan service or is able to may not really like it, but is able to look past it. Personally, I like it. Okay, as long as they don't put it in like serious scenes, which they don't really in this episode. Okay, granted, in that one scene where Arata was like using his magic to stop the breakdown phenomena, it did kind of end with him basically stripping every single female in the room, except for that one badass chick who was able to repel his magic. But, still though, like, that was, like, at the very end of it there, when he already already dispelled the breakdown phenomena. Okay. So, it, I don't really count that, okay. But I was really confused by the beginning of this episode because it was, it was a complete contrast to the end of the last episode, but that was it was explained later on. Basically, that was a little bit into the beginning of this episode was basically a little bit into the future when they already survived the breakdown phenomena, and I guess were going to the beach or whatever. And then they showed what happened or how the breakdown phenomena was was uh, taken care of, and then they went back to the present again. So that confusion, thankfully, was cleared up later on in the episode, or else that would have been a major complaint of mine. Okay, and apparently Arata is already improving with magic, because he's, he, because his Grimmamore is, or his Grimmamore is learning how to basically copy the magic of other mages, and you, and use it. So, so he, he, uh, or she basically did that with the red-haired chick's magic to transform into a gun and whatnot. Okay. And again, she even said it wasn't perfect, but still she copied it and altered it for, for his for Arata's use, which use, which of course was very impressive. Now, one thing that we get in this episode is a hint towards you know obviously he's going to find the others, all seven of the the uh, all seven of the Trinity Seven girls eventually. He's already found five of them. However, two of them don't want to have anything to do with him. <laughs> Those were the two that tried to kill him in the last episode. And still a little bit in this episode. They don't have anything to do with him, so he's basically going to have to try to pull them over to his side. But there's also two that he has yet to meet. Okay, one of them he... I, well, okay, one of them he did meet. He met... Uh, she basically saved him from being killed. Okay, from the attack at the end of the last episode. Basically, she's a special kind of mage where... And you can usually only talk to her in dreams and whatnot. So he actually did speak with her. Her she, her, her name is Yui. Okay. And the other one apparently went missing some time ago. But I I have a theory. I think that it's actually that blonde-haired chick. I think it's I think it's kind of obvious, quite honestly. They I mean the way that she was looking when the when the Areto chick basically said that that uh she went missing like her facial expression there, was a dead fucking giveaway that she's actually that mage. The only thing is, you'd think they'd recognize her, but maybe she, like, used some sort of magic to change her appearance. Maybe that's her magic, or maybe it's for some other reason. Who knows? But either way, though, I'm pre I'm about 99.9% .9 sure that she is actually that mage, okay? So, other than that... That, I forget her name, but that fucking, like, ninja chick in this episode was fucking hilarious, seriously. Like, I'm, I think it's been established at this point that the, that red-haired chick is definitely a tsundere. Okay. But it's not very often in anime where you get to see a another female take the force of a tsundere, which I thought was actually very unique, and I appreciated that. Granted, Arata did as well, but still... The way that fucking ninja chick was lit literally just grabbed onto the the red haired chick's boobs, okay, and was squeezing them for it must have been like a minute, squeezing and rubbing them for it must have been like a minute or two, okay, with with a perverted look on her face. 
Am I the only one who is getting fucking Yuri vibes from that series? I mean, she literally just grabbed onto them out of fucking nowhere. Oh my god. And, you know, and then of and and then of course the red hair chick secondary vibes kicked in on her, which again it was a nice change of pace for that to happen to a female rather than always to the guy. You know what I mean? I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. I'm sure it has at some point, but I don't think I've ever personally seen it myself though, okay. So I really did like that. That was probably my favorite well probably I think the funniest moment of the episode. Probably the funniest moment of the series so far too, although this has only been there's only three episodes released in it so far though. But anyways, overall, if you have yet to see this week's episode of Trinity 7, if you're still watching the series, because I know a lot of people have dropped it by now, then I definitely recommend you do. I very much enjoyed this episode. It has, like, this perfect balance of plot and comedy and fan service that I just love, okay? And, you know, I'm not saying I don't love anybody that don't have fan service, obviously, but I'm just saying that the fan service that's here is used well. And it's, I think anyways, that it definitely helps improve the comedy, actually. So anyways, overall, I hope you enjoyed this review, guys. See you guys. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.